Well hello, got a couple of little packages today from uh, AKK Tech and these are the ultimate VTXs as they call them because they go up to 1.2 watts which is like crazy powerful. And then this we've got the FX2 Ultimate which is basically built around the 30.5 volt stack for a mini quad and then one called the X2 Ultimate which is just a regular uh, regular VTX, you can put it on a quad, you can put it on a plane or, or whatever. And they've both got the MMCX adapters, which I'm a big fan of. Now I've got to say straight off the bat, there's almost no instances where you'd ever need to use 1200 milliwatts or 1.2 watts of power on 5.8. Um, you can go an awful long way at 25 milliwatts. Um, you can go an awful long way if you up that to 600 milliwatts. Certainly on a quad, probably further away than you can fly back again. Um, However, it's, it's an option and it's there and it uses small audio so you can change it all the way through uh, from 25 right up to 1200, so that's good news. AKK licensed small audio from TBS now so there's no worries about you using some illegal clone or something, it, it's all above board and good. And I'm gonna put it on uh, this quad here. This is kind of my experimental quad which is made up from various bits and it also happens to have one of the original FX2s which went up to I think either 600 or 800 milliwatts and makes it really easy for me to swap it out there so I can take that out and I can fly around and go behind some trees and see what the actual differences are and, and see how it performs both on the the lower end of the VTX and the higher end. I had an X4R on here which I took off for something else and I had another receiver on it um, and yeah because this is my little experimental quad things get swapped around so yeah I'll put a receiver on there before I fly, obviously, and uh, let's see how it does. Now, I'm not gonna talk in this video about how to wire up Smart Audio. If you wanna check that out, have a look at this one I did on the original X2 VTX. Um, and there's another video as well where I talk about the original FX2 uh, and the flight controller that goes in this one. But I'm gonna turn the light down just so you can see the LED, because I wanted to talk about exactly how smart audio works in terms of the spec versus what's on the actual device here. So smart audio spec is, is written by Team Black Sheep and it allows for four power levels and these are actually set at 25, 200, 500 and 800 milliwatts. Of course this doesn't quite fit in with this VTX which works at 25, 200, 600 and 1200 milliwatts. So when we actually set things to different powers, um, it will always come up as the OSD as the TBS spec of 25, 200, 500 and 800, but it will actually be set to AKK's spec of its, its four levels. So we're setting here to 500, it's actually setting to 600. And similarly, when we go ahead and set it to 800, it will set it uh, to 1200 and you can see the numbers there one two three four on the VTX and that is the main thing to take away from this so what you see on the screen doesn't necessarily match what's there on this one there's also pit mode available um, you can put it into race model instead of free and that will automatically put you in pit mode on the floor which is like 0. 1 milliwatts and you can see it flash P there. The idea is you can sort of set your power and your channels whilst in pit mode and then come out of it later. Hello and welcome to the field and look at this day. It's staggering. Uh, of course being English I'm now going to complain it's too hot and I'm going to burn because my skin burns under a 40 watt light bulb. It kind of reminds me someone asked if I'd miss the office at all being sort of doing this all the time and I was like no? Check that out. Or just on today's like this, which are rare, I do kind of miss the air conditioning. Anyway, we're here to check out the uh, AKK Ultimate, the VTX that does up to 1200 milliwatts, um, on this little quad here. So we're going to start off on 25, we're going to do a bit of flying around to see what we can get and we can up it to see what happens. What I'm going to be doing is just using a single um, Pagoda antenna on my goggles, so I'm not going to be using the diversity with the patch, just so I can hopefully see how the power of the VTX affects things rather than the actual receiving side which often has a bigger effect so let's get this in the air. So here we are on the field just having a fly and you can see there in the corner I've got F11 this means I'm on fat sharp 1 or 5740 1 being the 25 milliwatt setting and normally I fly along to the end of the field through the 
two trees there but you can see there's a van in the way um, I know they're going to be doing some building of new houses here at some point and I've seen these vans the last few days I don't know if there's some some starting work happening or this just forest stuff but it's a bit oh, it's a bit of a worry that uh, my field's going to disappear at some point but you know there you go all the open spaces will be taken away at some point it will see anyway so I am on the hunt here for places that are gonna find me more static so another part I always try is to take this little turn around that little post in the ground there and go through this gap and that gives me a little bit of, of breakup and there's a bit more breakup over the tree so let's concentrate on that tree situation and see if we can really find somewhere bad okay so dropping behind these trees here and look at that we've got a complete wipeout it looks like we can get behind uh, the most bushiest bit of the trees and that really takes us down so let's try that again just to make sure we've got something consistent okay so here I go I'm just trying to find the right spot here to get find that maximum tree cover there you go so what I'm doing there is, is then punching out over the top so I can recover my signal so yeah that that's a good comparison let's uh, let's get on to the other power levels and see how they compare and you'll see we're on F12 now so the 2 being the power level and that's 200 milliwatts in this situation so we're going to try and avoid that van there but just dip down behind these trees at a distance can't really get much response from that so let's let's head over to the other stuff where we had those trees before see if we can get something so here we are behind those trees that, that wiped us out before just trying to look for that weak bit of signal we can find there's where this sort of more leafy thing is and we're getting some break up but nothing major there it, it's it really has made a, a difference you can see we're getting uh, break up on the screen and once again this is not quite how it looks in the goggles it's more staticky in the goggles it's kind of like the DVR loses sync uh, and it's sort of a lot more rolling which doesn't happen but you can see there we were getting some break up but we had a, a decent flyable signal so let's move on to the next power setting now and do that again okay we're on to F13 now the 3 meaning the third power setting which is 600 milliwatts on this VTX one thing I was liking about this is often as I whack power up on these sort of VTXs you see an increased amount of noise lines on the screen I'm not seeing any of that uh, so this is essentially looking the same on 600 milliwatts as it did on 25 milliwatts which is good uh, once again there's you know there's barely a flicker here there's not much difference there between this and 25 milliwatts so let's get behind those trees and, and get to the good stuff so here we are behind these trees again just trying to line up to get the worst possible signal which seems to be somewhere behind here and quite a reasonable amount of breakup not quite as much as before but not quite as much of a difference and once again in the goggles it shows up more as sort of snowy static and in the DVR recording you it looks like more of a full screen breakup which I think is like a syncing problem with the the video which just doesn't happen in reality but you get the impression of, of what happens a slightly more flyable signal but not this massive upgrade from the 200 milliwatts so let's move on to the last big power okay f14 with the four meaning 1200 milliwatts 1 1.2 watts of 5.8 power fortunately there's no one else around me to fly so nobody's signal to jump all over um, and just going down the end once again and I'm not expecting to see much difference here because there wasn't really much difference between 25 milliwatts and anything else and there's really not much there is there so let's get behind those trees and see what happens okay so here we are behind those trees just going along to get a reasonable distance before turning around and starting to come back again trying to line up behind those thick bushes and you can see there's plenty of break up on the screen um, once again it's a slightly cleaner signal but there's not that much in it because of course the power between 600 and 1200 is really just a little bit more but you know it it was fairly good um, it was definitely flyable and definitely a big difference from 25 milliwatts and again this is this isn't a scientific test this is just me flying around and giving you my sort of anecdotal point of view 
results may vary depending on your circumstances and how you fly. So those are the AKK Ultimate VTXs. Now I have to say I wasn't expecting huge leaps and bounds on what we were getting there because as I mentioned before the amount of power you have to increase the VTX by is like um, I think they call it logarithmic in terms of it it goes upwards basically you have to multiply something by four to get twice the power so 100 is twice 25 400 is twice 100 and 1.2 is, is twice 400 so we're dealing with a situation at 25 milliwatts and 1.2 milliwatts, there's only like a, a four times difference. That said, you could see when we were behind the trees on 25 milliwatts, we were able to wipe ourselves out completely, which we weren't able to do on the higher powers. So if you've got something where you're in a tricky situation, you're not necessarily far away, but you're close in and there's a lot of dense cover, then this is something that might help you and especially help you more if you match up with some diversity receivers where you've got uh, a gain antenna and a, a regular Omni, that will that will do you well of good. Uh, of course, two two things to say about flying at high power. Firstly, it's it's not very sociable. If you've got any friends flying around you, don't put this up to 1200 milliwatts because it will wipe their signal out. It doesn't matter what channel they're going to be on. When something is shouting quite that loudly, they're going to get ghosting over if they come anywhere near you. So just when when you're out with friends flying knock it down to a reasonable uh, rate or will match what they've got the other thing of course is is the higher powers on on these ones will generate a lot of heat so make sure they get decent airflow i was a little bit worried on this quad because it's the the frames quite actually enclosed there is it was it going to be getting enough airflow over and that was one of the hottest days of year it's like 30 degrees out there so one thing I was impressed with as I went through the power range the the amount of noise I had uh, coming back to me through my goggles was was the same all the way through so 25 milliwatts up to 1.2 watts all at the same so that's pretty good I, I thought often you get the situation where as you whack the power up there's there's sort of more electrical noise coming through and the, the pitch is just not as good but this this was really nice as I said they've got the uh, the stack version this, this is the old one, this is just the FX2, but it looks essentially the same as the FX2 Ultimate. And this is the, the X2. So if you've run out of stack space, if you've got a really compact frame, then this sort of thing is uh, is the way to go. Same connector. Um, I could plug them in, I could work them through Smart Audio, all the same way. I'd guess if you were using a plane, this would be slightly more uh, usable because you could put it in a different place. But uh, equally, with, with people using iNav and flight controllers more, there's no reason not to go with a stack as long as you've got the airflow once again to, to go through it. Yep, so there you go, the FX2 Ultimate and X2 Ultimate from AKK. Good VTXs, I was quite impressed with them. Nice and clean, easy to install, smart audio works to treat. Uh, links are down below if you want to check them out on the AKK website. Hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.